Okay, so my name is Coco Fusco and the video that I have in the Forum Expanded program and in the Berlinale is called To Live in June with Your Tongue Hanging Out. And it's an homage to the Cuban writer Reinaldo Arenas. Sé que más allá de la muerte está la muerte. Sé que más acá de la vida está la estafa. Sé que no existe el consuelo. Que no existe la anhelada tierra de mis sueños. Ni la desgarrada visión de nuestros héroes. Pero te seguimos buscando, patria. En las traiciones del recién llegado. Y en las mentiras del primer cronista. Sé que no existe refugio del abrazo. Y que, y que, Dios, y que Dios es un estruendo de hojalata. Pero te seguimos buscando, patria. En, la en las amenazas del nuevo impostor. En las palmas que revientan bulldoceadas. En la visión, ¿no? Sé que no existe la visión. Sé que no existe la sé visión. Sé que no existe la visión del que siempre perece entre las llamas. Y que no existe la tierra presentida. Pero te seguimos buscando. Tierra. tierra. En el incesante en roer. El, en, en el, el roer, roer incesante de las aguas. En el reventar de mangos y mameyes. En el tecleteo de las estaciones. Y en la confusión de todos los gritos. Hi, welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. My name is Jean Bois Bobak, and this time we're going to discuss the movie To Live in June with Your Tongue Hanging Out with director Coco Fusco. Hi, welcome to the Teddy, welcome to the Berlinale. It's nice to be here. Um, yeah, great. Um, so tell us a bit about um, this project. How did it come about, okay. and what is the concept? That um, you used? Well, I've been, I love Reynaldo Arenas' work. Okay. Obviously, that's one thing. But besides that, uh, in the last uh, four or five years, I've made three pieces about Cuban poets who got in some way uh, involved with politics mm -hmm. and uh, fell from grace. Right. And they have been, in a way, disappeared from the official history yeah. of the culture. So you can't find Arenas' work anywhere in Cuba. It's not for sale. It's mm. not in a library. It's not taught. It's in the mem people's memory, and intellectuals who know a lot about literary history will know something, and if they travel, they can get copies abroad, but his work is not available officially. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the case with the other two. And uh, in, there's already, you know, for a long time, Reynaldo Alenas wasn't known outside of the Spanish-speaking world. Mm -hmm. But when Julian Schnabel made the movie based on his memoir, right. then he became more known outside, right? Yeah. But I was interested in uh, what happened to him when he disappeared from official culture in mm -hmm. Cuba, in when he became a persona non grata. And he basically, it ha he was, as a young man, got literary awards and was... Uh, celebrated for his mm -hmm. brilliance, yeah. but uh, because he was openly gay and also critical of the government, uh, he was uh, kind of removed officially from uh, the culture. Yeah. And a lot of the persecution of him in the early 70s, they used his sexuality as a way to try to stop him as an intellectual yeah. and trumped up a case against him, mm. uh, in one, which is how he got arrested. Yeah. In any case, what I was interested in was the kind of secret culture that he made mm -hmm. when he wasn't allowed to be published anymore yeah. or present himself anymore. And he would go to Lennon Park with a couple of his friends and make their literary salon out there, the idea that they wouldn't be surveyed and that they could um, share their work. And they were also working on the first independent literary magazine to be made in mm -hmm. Cuba during the revolution that they were writing by hand. Right. Once he left the country in 1980, then he was able to actually publish the magazine. So, but I wanted to find the place where he had been. Yeah. And also, when he, the first time he was arrested, he escaped from uh, the police station and he went back to the park and he lived in the park as a fugitive for a while. Oh, I see. And uh, his friends would bring him food and uh, razors to shave oh. and things like this yeah, yeah, yeah. for a while. And that's where he began to write the memoir before Night Falls. Yes. So I wanted to find the place yeah. and bring poets who are now in trouble there yeah. to, to, in a way, to almost create like a performative 
memorial to uh -huh. him. Yeah, right. And uh, so I found one of his friends, uh, Juan Abreu, who's still alive and lives nice. in Spain. And I wrote to him and he was very helpful and, uh, uh, and he had diaries from the time, notebooks, uh, and he had published some excerpts. Yeah. Um, and so he explains in there what they did and how many days and when he would go and how he would get there. Right. So uh, with his help, um, I was able to figure out where they had been. And then with uh, Cuban friends, you know, did the location scouting, figured out how to shoot and mm. everything else, and then brought the writers and performers there yeah. to, do the, to do the performance. Yeah. But did you have any difficulties with, oh, like, I, well, you know, I've been doing project. work for 30 years in yeah. Cuba and a lot of different web ex exhibitions and bringing people uh -huh. out and publishing stuff. And in the last 10 years, it got a lot easier for me to film without right. uh, trying to get permission. Yeah. And, uh, but on this, uh, this last year, I got stopped when I was going before the shoot uh, to set up the production mm. um, because of work that I had done with independent artists yeah. on the island about an event that they were trying to put on outside the government. So they stopped me and uh, turned me away at immigration. And at that point, then I didn't know if I could do it. But um, my cameraman had come with me already to Cuba two times before, and he knew the people. Mm -hmm. And my uh, local producer already had the driver set up. Everything yeah. was all set up. So we just thought, I had a deadline. And I thought, well, it's now or we don't do it, right? Yeah. So I sent them, and the way that we communicated was through Facebook Messenger, which is now Cuban Telephone. Okay. Um, because it's uh, it's encrypted the messaging, yeah. so it's safer to be able to mm -hmm. chat. So most of my friends, that's how we talk, yeah. um, and uh, so that's how we did it. Wow. Yeah. That's that, that's pretty insane. Yeah. Um, so the concept of the film is basically that these three artists who visit um, this place in Lenin Park, um, they memorize, try to memorize a poem. Uh, by Arenas, and uh, they try to recite it then. In the place where yeah. he had done it, yes. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, and it's very interesting because um, it brings in questions about memory work and about uh, performance as well. Uh, what was your take on this? What, what did you want to well, tell with this? There's a struggle to remember what is forbidden. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and it, this is a recurring theme in the pieces that I've done because yeah. there is a younger generation of intellectuals, artists, creative people in Cuba who they know that these people existed before and they know that the message was in some way uh, controversial mm. and they want to embrace that history but the question is you know how do you recall something that you've never been allowed to see right. how do you remember something that you don't quite know exactly right um, and so I've in different ways tried to uh, represent this uh, effort mm -hmm. in a, a number of different uh, videos that I've yeah. done and you know some is to kind of go back to the place or to uh, recall a story that has been suppressed in some way or to find a testimony um, in the uh, the piece that I did before yeah. I found a woman poet who had been banished from the country living in the United States and so I was able to go and interview mm -hmm. her and use that yes. so the whole idea is to restore to the culture the chapters that are suppressed and of course the irony here is that Arenas is probably the best known Cuban writer in the world yeah right and yet you cannot have access to him inside yeah. and even Mariela Castro who supposedly has is more liberal um, you know made a public statement about him a few months ago in which she said that he was a, 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 a pervert who had been arrested for abusing minors and the thing is that everybody knows including in Cuba that that was a trumped up charge and yeah. even the minors went to court and testified in his favor so she's still perpetuating this idea that he this was punished image, for something yeah. that he deserved to be punished for instead of acknowledging that he was a literary genius and yeah. that um, he's probably one of the most respected um, writers yeah. from the post-revolutionary period. Yeah. So in the movie, um, they say that uh, this particular poem uh, 
which is introduction to the symbol of faith, yeah. um, was chosen sort of because um, because it is still valid. I mm -hmm. think that's the that's the word that they use in in the film. Mm -hmm. um, what is it exactly that makes it so valid and so re kind of reflective of our mm -hmm. times as well? well that's a great question, and it, it, it goes to the heart of the poem. The poem is a search, right? It says, I'm looking. I'm looking yeah. for a dream, I'm looking for a word, I'm looking for a poem, I'm looking for a, a country, I'm looking for, I'm, I haven't found what I, what, or we haven't found. Yeah. What, and instead, what are we faced with? Bread lines that go on forever, you know, ceremonies that have no meaning. So he's describing the contradiction that many Cubans feel between what they were educated to believe was coming and what they actually live, yeah. right? And when he wrote it, it was during the 10 million ton sugar harvest in 1970 and he was in a forced labor camp cutting cane all day long. And somebody smuggle, would smuggle paper in for him to be able to write. Yeah. And so, you know, for, he was literally living that contradiction in a very painful way. But even so, it's one of his best known poems. And I know a rapper in Cuba who's made a song mm. using the poem because it describes that um, contradictory condition that yeah. supposedly, you know, this, uh, this triumphalist way of thinking about Cuba that everything changed for the better, but in reality, people struggle and have not really attained what they were told they would get. Yeah, right. right. Was it a particular aim of yours to maybe think about this project as, a, as taking care of a particular heritage, particular literally heritage, mm -hmm. and also kind of, well, setting the record straight in a way? Was this something that you that you had in mind? I, you know, I think that any person who knows about Arenas and his work knows that what was done to him was wrong. Mm. I don't feel like I have to, you know, I'm not the one who has to. Yeah. But there is no official recognition in Cuba of this, right? And, uh, uh, and, and so it creates this situation in which young people who are not so close-minded, who are not so narrow, who actually want to embrace the totality of yeah. of Cuban culture want to have more connection to it, yeah. want to have more access. So, and a lot of what I think a younger generation of artists are doing right now there is to try to recuperate those taboo chapters of history yeah. in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's I, I see the video project as part of that effort. And, it, you know, my work doesn't show in official venues, but it's uh, circulated in the uh, underground way that people in Cuba and mm. a lot of other countries distribute um, literature and media. Yeah. There's a, a phenomenon in Cuba called El Paquete, the package, mm -hmm. and it's basically a, a terabyte flash drive. Okay. And uh, that's how people get movies, television, books, uh, video games, news that you officially can't buy. Right. And there are people who dedicate themselves to getting, bringing the media in. And then you go and you bring your drive and you pay to Seuse, which is about, I don't know, uh, two euros and something. Yeah. And, um, and then you get every week you get new material. Wow. So, you know, artists have galleries in their homes and people circulate and watch that most, I think most people under 40, that's their source of, of media. They don't really watch Cuban television anymore. Yeah. What do you think, what is it that um, the rediscovery of Arenas' work within Cuba could bring, um, yeah, on a cultural level? What, what is it? Maybe it's it's a bit blunt to come down to like an mm -hmm. essential thing and just put that out. But what do you think? What would be that core thing that it could really bring to the fore and could really enrich and maybe provide a change? Uh, well, I think that to to officially recognize that the government made a mistake, not mm. only with him but yeah. with thousands and thousands of people who lost their jobs, <laughs> lost their homes, were expelled from the country, were put in prison simply because of the way that they think or who they want to have sex with. I'm like, you know, if that were officially acknowledged in a very deep yeah. way, it would make a 
it would make a big change for how, um, you know, what kind of conversation you can have publicly about mm. culture in the country, what you can teach children, what you can embrace openly, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and it's not like, I mean, I don't, I think that the situation, the actual situation for gays and lesbians in Cuba has gotten somewhat better since his time, but the fact that his work is still suppressed is also because of his political views, right? Mm. And I think that if, if there was an opening in which you could appreciate artists for the value of their work and leave their politics alone, I think it would be much healthier for the society. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, Coco, thank you so much well, thank for you. being here with us Thanks. and sharing all this because it was super interesting. Good. I wish you all the best for Thanks. the Berlinale and enjoy the festival and thank hopefully you. we see each other very soon. Thanks.